Hey there, Dynamics 365 friends. Today we're gathered together to talk a little bit about the newish feature in the Microsoft platform, which is Viva Sales. Now, if you're like me, you've heard a lot about Viva Sales in the context of connecting Dynamics 365 with Outlook and with Teams, which sounds really cool. And when I dive in and I learn a little bit more about Viva Sales, specifically the Outlook connection, I'm left with one overarching question that I can't seem to find the answer of. Is it just me or does Viva Sales sound an awful lot like the Dynamics 365 app for Outlook? And, and then I'm curious, the next step, when would we use Viva Sales over the app for Outlook? Or should we be using both of them? I'm confused. If I'm confused, chances are maybe you are too. So what does Microsoft say on this matter? Well, I've been asking this question pretty much anywhere I can, and I got an answer on a YouTube video from the Microsoft Power Platform. So I want you to zero in on these two pieces of information, and this is the Microsoft YouTube account replying to my questions about how does this relate to the Dynamics app for Outlook, and they very succinctly and simply answered the question in a way that illuminates this a little bit more for me. So the Microsoft account says, Dynamics 365 app for Outlook covers broader roles than sales, so it's a solid option for certain needs. Where the investment aligns more to the sales persona, we're gonna to look to land those into Viva Sales, as that productivity app brings a richer experience to sellers over and above tracking. Both apps can coexist, but we believe a seller should look to land in Viva Sales as a first option. I mean, they made it pretty crystal clear. If I am implementing Dynamics 365 for sales users, they should go to Viva Sales. Now, the person below on that same video asked another question, which I think is great. So what is the features matrix that compares Dynamics app for Outlook and Viva Sales, which is something I've been curious about as well. And they again answer this really well. Dynamics app for Outlook is the solution that spans across all Dynamics roles. So again, if you're looking to track emails, to track meetings, set regarding to different Dynamics data outside of sales, or if you're using service, marketing, custom tables, anything like that, that's the path that you should take. So again, they're saying that you can run that alongside with a rapid release cycle with Viva Sales, adding new capabilities to enrich these experiences, including tracking functionality. I still recommend going to Viva Sales for the first instance. So that said, since I can't find anything, I've decided to dedicate this video to the feature showdown. This is just my subjective analysis of Viva Sales versus Dynamics app for Outlook. Again, just as a feature showdown. And I use the Microsoft documentation on Microsoft Learn, as well as the sales page for Viva Sales, and what I already know about the Dynamics app for Outlook. So here's your feature comparison. It's my first stab at this. I hope you like this. Feature one here, create and edit customer data in Outlook. You can do that in both the app for Outlook and for Viva Sales. Connect to CRM for Outlook. Look, I know we're here in a Dynamics 365 community, so you're all Dynamics 365 users. Obviously, the Dynamics app for Outlook is only for Dynamics 365. Viva Sales actually supports both Salesforce and Dynamics 365. The ability to link meetings and appointments to any Dynamics 365 table. That's the Dynamics 365 app for Outlook. Viva Sales, like Microsoft said in those comments that we just looked at on the prior slide, is limited only to sales. So if you need to extend this capability beyond sales, you're gonna have to use the app for Outlook for now. View information in context of an Outlook email or meeting. You can use either for that, either the app for Outlook or Viva Sales. Now here's where we start to lose some points for the app for Outlook and some big gains in Viva Sales. Collaborate across teams. Man, that Teams integration is tight with Viva. Use AI to track positive or negative sentiment of conversations. This is so cool. This is where Viva Sales starts to get really exciting. And you're probably getting excited if you didn't know it had these AI capabilities. Um, then let's talk about license for a little bit because 
Dynamics 365 Sales Professional, which right now is $65 per user per month. It's that base license for sales does include the Dynamics app for Outlook. It does not include Viva Sales. You'll need a premium sales license in order to get Viva Sales for free. There are three really cool AI prompted actions that you can do within Viva Sales that I am super excited to start playing with. We've got meeting sentiment, AI generated notes, and AI suggested action items. How amazing is this? So. I don't know how you feel, but I'm I'm on board. Viva Sales seems pretty cool. I have installed it in my Outlook. I'm gonna start playing around with it. I'm gonna kind of document my journey and I'll share it with everybody here about the transition or acceptance or maybe rejection of Viva Sales from the perspective of a very heavy app for Outlook user. Uh, and again, I just, I'm so excited about what Viva Sales has. And I still love my Dynamics 365 app for Outlook. So we'll see. Let me know what you think. Are you using Viva Sales? Have you switched over completely? Are you still using Dynamics app for Outlook? What are your thoughts? What are your suggestions? And what are you looking forward to?